Fiat Chrysler and PSA are joining forces. The companies announced a tie-up that creates the world's fourth largest car maker. It could help them offset a slowdown in the industry and develop costly new technologies. This is good news for France, this is good news for Europe because you know that we have to face the challenges of the electric cars, of the autonomous cars and to face that kind of challenges you need to have champions at the world level. France's PSA will benefit from Fiat Chrysler's profitable US business. At the same time, the Italian-American carmaker will get access to PSA's modern technology, which will help it comply with tough emission laws. For Fiat Chrysler, I think this is almost like a rescue. The company saw a huge technological setback over the past few years, and on its own, it would have enormous difficulties to compete with others on e-mobility and other topics of the future. For Peugeot, see Opel, that's decisive for them in the urge to grow bigger. Bigger means 14 brands under one roof, with the scale to sell everything from trucks to luxury cars. And more variety is set to bring more profit. The new auto giant will be worth around $50 billion. The merger will save the companies a projected $4 billion a year with revenues of nearly $190 billion. It's expected to sell around 9 million cars annually. Officials say no factories will be closed and none of the 410,000 jobs cut. But unions are cautious as demand for vehicles slows. According to the IMF, global car production fell 1.7% last year. The workers shouldn't feel reassured. I don't necessarily want to be alarmist, but certainly these two families will want to increase profits in the future off the back of their employees who will have to pay the price. The combined firm still has a long way to go to catch up with its larger rivals Volkswagen, Renault and Toyota. It will need to accelerate its electric vehicle program while also breaking into the lucrative Chinese market to stay in the race. Sibel Karkush, TRT World. Well, for more on this, Juan Felipe Munoz Vieira joins us now from London. He's a senior analyst at Jato Dynamics. Welcome to Money Talks, Juan Felipe. Now, what's your reaction to this proposed mega merger? Is it a good move for Fiat Chrysler and PSA Group? Well, yes, it's definitely a good move. Uh, for, for a long time, FCA was announcing or was showing the industry its interest on finding a partner. Uh, it's, uh, the conditions of the global market are deteriorating and FCA, it's lagging behind its rivals in some uh, key topics like the electrification. So any merger or any partner are well, more than welcome in the case of FCA. Yes, now as you say, Fiat Chrysler has been shopping around for a partner for a while now. It was looking to merge with Renault, but we know the French government didn't like that idea. It seems to like this merger though. What's the difference? Well, uh, the conditions of the markets, the global market is changing quite a lot. In June, we didn't have this bad situation we have right now. China is not, is fall, uh, the Chinese market is falling now. The US and the European car markets are not growing anymore. So now it's, it's more important than in June, for example. And Peugeot doesn't have these ties with another car maker like, like Renault with Nissan. So it's more, it's, it's any easier it's for Peugeot to, to, to merge with FCA in this case. Interesting. Now, representatives from both companies, Fiat Chrysler and PSA Group, have been trying to convey that this is a 50-50 split, a merger of equals. But it was interesting to see the market reaction. Fiat Chrysler shares jumped around 10%, while PSA shares fell by around the same amount. It suggests that perhaps Fiat shareholders will be better off than uh, PSA shareholders. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, from the two companies, even if FCA is bigger in terms of sales volume, uh, it has a more complicated situation than, than PSA. Uh, as you know, uh, PSA is now launching its first electric cars, but FCA is quite uh, behind in this uh, electrification race. 
It's also it, uh, it also uh, has to deal with some uh, lineup issues. It's cars in Europe and some cars in the US are getting old. So it needs uh, money or it needs uh, uh, new technologies that PSA has. So it's, uh, it's more positive for the Italian side than the French one. Because at the end, the French side is going to, to earn its access to the North American uh, market and, uh, from, from Fiat. Yes, and we know Volkswagen has uh, traditionally dominated Europe's auto industry. Do you think this merger may threaten uh, the German giant's uh, dominance in that region? It definitely uh, becomes a, a new big uh, uh, competitor to Volkswagen. Actually, if you look at the H1 sales in Europe, uh, with this merger, uh, PSA and, F and FCA would become the biggest in Europe if we include the Turkish market and the uh, light commercial vehicles. It's also uh, quite challenging for Volkswagen because uh, this new merger group will become also the first SUV maker in Europe. And we have to remember that SUVs are now the only segment growing and it's one of the most profitable ones right now in, in Europe. OK, well, let's keep an eye on these developments to see if the merger does go ahead. Uh, Juan Felipe Munoz-Vieira, thank you so much for your analysis.